Hello, everybody. Welcome to Arsenal X, the Xbox podcast here on Boss Rush Games. Next Gen is here. Next Gen is this? here. I'm one of your hosts, Corey here, and alongside me, as always, is the last gen hopeful, the wise Wisconsinite, Mr. Jesse Douglas. How's it going, everyone? Uh, uh, also joining us is Colonel Panic himself, Joe Wilson. Hiya. Last gen's on eBay right now for me. So nice. it's official. I'm, I've moved on. Nice. Uh, <laughs> also, last but not least, is our lore archivist, Mr. X and S, Josh Finney. Yeah, I left last gen behind a couple of days ago after going to multiple Game Stops and finally getting them to take my consoles. Oh my gosh! <laughs> take my console. So Dude, okay, no, no. Listen, I'm so mad. I'm still upset about this. Okay, because share I your went story. In there. This is I, where I went the... into the first. Yeah, I go into the first Game Stop. Okay, the place I've gone for years. I've done multiple orders at. Done business with them for like five, six years, right? And the guy at the counter, after I get everything unpacked, after he's hooked up the consoles, he looks at the controllers, he goes, oh, yeah, I can't take this. These have cosmetic damage to them. And I was like, cosmetic damage? He goes, yeah, these are unsellable. And I looked at it, and I was like, okay, my thumbsticks are a little worn. Like, that's to be expected when you use the same controller for four years. Mm -hmm. And then he shows me my Halo one, and he goes, yeah, this is unsellable, too. And I was like, on what grounds? Show me. There is no damage to that controller whatsoever. There was like a little scuff mark on the underside of my thumbstick. So he's like, yeah, I can't take these. He's like, you're going to have to buy two new controllers to go with them. And he's like, our cheapest controller is $40 or like 45 or something like that. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I'll hold on to these. I, said, I literally looked up. I was like, somebody on eBay will take these. Also, <laughs> I've bought stuff from GameStop before. Yeah. Nothing is unsellable. Yeah, I was going to say, has he I'd ever looked at it. anything inside I'd a GameStop before? <laughs> no, no, no. It gets better. So I go to the GameStop down the street, right? Because, I mean, it's Dallas-Fort Worth. There's one on, like, every street corner. It's, like, almost as frequent as 7-Eleven and McDonald's. Ooh. So I go to down there, go in there, and the guy's unpacking them, and he, he gets to the white controller, and he just kind of looks at me, looks at it, looks at me, looks down. And I was like, yeah, do I need to buy a new controller? Like, just tell me now, because if I do, I'm going to walk out that door. And he's like... No, no. He's like, what would be wrong with it? And that's so I explained to him what I just told y'all about the previous GameStop. And he's like, all right, so I'm going to play a game. because I'm going to describe the guy who said this to you, and you tell me if I'm right. So he describes it, like, right down to, like, facial features. And I was like, yeah, that's him. He goes, oh, yeah, we get complaints about that guy, like, daily. He's always got some reason why he won't take something, or he he won't do like a uh, a ship to home order or what? something for people. He he hounds them to renew their power up rewards or like get the get the uh, protection plan on discs. And like if you don't do it, like he keeps pressing it on you. He's like this. It gets better. That guy's the manager of that store. Apparently that makes sense. Yeah. So I was like, well, that's cool. He's lost my, my business forever, even though it's been a reliable store in the past. I'm coming mm -hmm. here if I have to go to a GameStop. And the guy just looks at me. This is the creme de la creme. He goes, dude, honestly, he's like, just do what we do. Buy off Amazon. <laughs> so the moral of the story, kids, is if you want to trade in a console, try to sell it on eBay first or on <sighs> Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, yeah. literally anywhere but GameStop. I only mm -hmm. went there instead of my mom and pop shop because they gave me $230 for the Halo 5 Xbox and the oh, 2 wow. terabyte one S. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got 230 total, which not bad. I, I don't know how much more I would have honestly made on eBay. And the last thing I needed, someone would be like, oh, you sent me a defective console. You sent me a defective controller, especially for the limited edition one. So whatever. I yeah. got them offloaded. I bought a $200 headset that I now need to take back to the store. It's fantastic. What what headset? Uh, I I got the Steel Series Nine X. Ooh. Nice. Oh, why why did you have to take it back? Because I want the Seven X. Oh. Okay. I don't want the fancier, more expensive one. I'd rather have the other sixty bucks in my pocket. Yeah. Some cheap. No, it makes sense. That's and fair. they and didn't that... have the Seven X in stock at any GameStop, but they had it online. So I'm gonna take it in there and be like, I wanted the Seven X. I told this to the checkout man very clearly. But he was also taking two consoles that might or might not have been sellable. So I'm not going to argue. And I took the upsell to make him feel good. Do you ever feel like when you, go into, my money back. when you go into GameStop, like the people's court theme starts to play? Like, <laughs> doo -doo 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 -doo. 
<laughs> and you're just I, like, like I feel like I'm gonna walk in there and like Judge Alex is gonna be sitting there one of these days. Oh, they have a gavel and like, what are you trying to sell today? And be like, oh, I got these three consoles. And they'll be like, let's hear from the defendant. Be like, wait, what defendant? <laughs> Yeah, right? It's like, I feel like I'm on trial because I'm trying to give you the products I bought from you back. Yeah, that's And awesome. I'm going to spend the money. Like, the way I tried phrasing it with that manager was I was like, dude, if you take these, I swear to God, I'm going to spend every single penny in your store right now and probably a little extra because I want more than what this trade value is going to cover. Yeah. Yeah. No, no dice. He uh, still wouldn't do it. That uh, man would have made a profit of almost $100 off of me. Yeah, it's not going to cut it. He's got to make at Phil least three hundred. Phil Spencer is upset about this partnership, and so is Reggie. Uh, to be fair, they're the ones that made the deal in the first place. Was, I know. So, so I, I was rather upset. Anyways, that's my story. But hey, next gen is here, baby. Both, my, both consoles are in this house. So the X and the S. I have a story to tell now. Oh Christ! Target didn't even ship mine until Tuesday, and the original. <laughs> I know. I feel like everybody that got a console from Target is very upset, has been very upset this week. Uh, although anybody who's getting one off of Amazon, sorry, Jesse, uh, is also very upset. <laughs> so uh, uh, The panic that went through my brain when I started seeing the cancellation emails go out or the delay emails, I was like, oh, God, oh, God, please, no, please not me, please not me. I yeah. get confirmation that it shipped. I'm celebrating. And then I check the group chat. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, I'm <laughs> keeping this to myself. I'm not going to post pictures of it with me. I'm not going to make a birth announcement uh, about it. I'm just going to be normal. I, uh, I, Jesse messaged me. He's like, have you heard anything about my Xbox yet? I'm like, no. Literally 10 minutes e later, I get the email from Amazon that said, well, we're working really hard to uh, get you your console. You, we... What they say that we're quite confident that you'll get your console before <laughs> December thirty first. Yeah, they're they're like, yeah, you could get it by the thirty. Uh, I'm just as just late saying, as I, I think they looked at I think but... they looked at my Twitch Prime profile and they're like, all right, this motherfucker has spent uh, spent a lot of Bezos bucks with, with us. We better get him that console. <laughs> I spend a lot of Bezos bucks too. I give that man my left testicle every year. Like, let me uh, just you know, yeah, oh, but. Uh, Glad but, to go to the right one. It's still safe and secure. Yeah, I well, pay. I yeah. pay for. I pay for Amazon Prime, and I barely even use it. So <laughs> they should be kissing. They should be not only kissing, but licking my ass. Whoa! <laughs> Whatever you're. It's twenty. Listen, it's hey. twenty twenty. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, but uh, Target shipped mine, and they like I wasn't. I was originally not supposed to get it till tomorrow, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna have a console to talk about on our podcast on 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 sunday and i'm the freaking host it's gonna be terrible i'm gonna have to re i'm gonna have to rely on joe and josh you would have yeah you would have just had to like turn it over to me and joe it's just gonna be a two-man show tonight <laughs> yeah uh but then it updated on friday and said oh it's coming on saturday so i'm like okay i know and, and it was going to my parents house so i'm like great i'm gonna have to drive like 30 minutes there and 30 minutes home whatever it's fine mm -hmm. 30 minutes 30 minutes they said they my parents said FedEx usually comes to our house between 930 and 11. I'm like, great, I'm going to get it. I'm going to go early to my parents. I'm going to get it. I'm going to come home, set it all up while my while my kids napping and my wife goes shopping or whatever. It's going to be great. I'm just going to set it all up. It'll be done Saturday night. Boom. Destiny gears tactics. Let's go. So that was a lie. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was. Uh, at one thirty, I still haven't heard from my parents, so I'm like, "All right, wife, I'm going. I'm going to my they parents' house, it and they're playing it." Yeah, <laughs> you get there and they're playing it. Like, oh, this is awesome. I mean, my dad's reaction—he was kind of interested. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, I well, first of all, Tuesday I got my controller and my, I got everything else on Tuesday, right? Like everything else came. I'm like, all right, I'm ready. By the way, side tangent. Thank God. The new controllers use this damn typey keyboard thing that I'm never going to use because it it helps me so much. I'm so glad that you bought the Sega Conspiracy Blue controller, Corey. It's a I'm, nice looking controller. It, it really is. is, though. It is. I'm going to get another. <laughs> oh, I'm one. not saying it's not. I'm just saying the shade of it is exactly the same shade as the fucking Sega logo. Yeah. Yeah. Which is hilarious. Uh, wouldn't it be funny if this week 
Xbox by Sega. No, it wouldn't be. be awesome. I don't want to. Uh, the, I don't want to have to have a monopoly conversation. No, I need. A, I need a Thanks Sonic again. versus Banjo versus Conquer game right now. Uh, versus anyways. Master Chief. It's yeah. called Chief Super Chief. Smash Brothers, Corey. We already have two of those guys in there. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Anyways, on Saturday, I get to my parents' house at like two o'clock. My mom offers me lunch, which is very nice. But I told her I already ate lunch, and then she offers me lunch like four or five more times. I'm like. I literally ate two sandwiches and like half of a family size bag of nachos and salsa before I got here. Okay. Not hungry. <laughs> Not hungry. So we sit there and I'm like going through some of the stuff at my parents' house. I brought I brought home my Halo Reach statue and my uh Marcus Phoenix uh, Gears 3 statue. So they're now safely secured on my shelf. Nice. So that was nice. Also, I have two huge Gears Lancers in my in my car right now. Don't really know what to do with them. You need to have them so that they cross like this, like that they're hitting into each other, like when they're doing the chainsaw thing and mounted above some like a fireplace or something. Well, one is the Gears 2 uh, regular Lancer and the other one is the retro Lancer from Gears 3. Uh, so I don't really know where to put them. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But I, I brought those home. I have a bunch of other crap. I'm sitting there. I'm waiting. It's like 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock rolls around. FedEx guy finally rolls up. By the way, at 10 till 2, I pass the FedEx guy on the next street over from my parents. Okay. I'm like, great. Got to be like two or three stops. Here we go. No. Like two, two and a half hours later, he rolls up to my parents' house. I'm like, Jesus. I go to the door. The box looks thin and long my first reaction was oh no they sent me an xbox one and i i i take the package from the guy and i'm like oh no this is not nearly heavy enough and i'm like oh my god they sent me an xbox one i was about to freak out on target i open it up no series x good to go Corey Corey was fully prepared to go full karen yeah oh (laughs) i was oh oh it, yeah, <laughs> he would he would have called the guy from from Best Buy that tried to assist him with his matter last week just for good measure. Which one? I've called seven times. I still haven't got my refund, by the way. That's something's Absolutely. wrong. Yeah, from Best Buy. So tomorrow, my whole lunch break will be on hold at Best Buy. But yeah, I uh, got it. I I opened it at my parents' house. There's pictures of me hugging this box, opening it up. Showing it off to my parents who have no idea what this box is, why I care so much about it, you know. <laughs> and uh, then I brought it home, hooked it up, got all my games transferred over, and then I'm like, I gotta, I gotta try out Gears Tactics. I'm like, all right, 4K, got some ray tracing, quick loads, whatever. I don't know what they did to this game, but I'm ready to play it. Oh, there's an update. Gotta download the update. You want the update? Download the update. Update. With the update? Yeah, I want the update. Click on it. I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna have to do this with every single game. So I just play Destiny. But uh, that was my Series X story. Joe, you got a got a cool story to tell? Mine was really uneventful. I uh, called GameStop the day before just to verify because the status kept like changing and being like, it's like waiting product. We're like preparing for pickup, and it just kept bouncing back and forth. So I call. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to pick up an Xbox tomorrow. I just want to make sure it's here and then I can come pick it up tomorrow. And the guy's like, yep, I see you right here. And I gave him no information. So he apparently just like read the phone number off the caller ID. And I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, do you need anything? And he's like, Joe Wilson, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, yep, it's here. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I literally meet my friend that morning. to. He wanted to buy one of my monitors that I'm getting rid of, which I have way too many. Um So I went and met him for like breakfast at Panera, sold that to him, drove. Picked up my console, came in, plugged it in, uh, picked up a pizza on the way home for lunch. Uh, <laughs> a whole pizza for lunch, up. huh? Oh, I ate a whole pizza. It was delicious. That's awesome. It was a great day. Oh, uh, yeah. And then uh, literally plugged it in. It had, did the little thing through the app. It was super easy to set it up. Just didn't transfer anything. Just downloaded Destiny Fresh. Um, and then just been playing mostly Yes, it was very uneventful and very exciting, and I had like kind of the whole day to myself that's awesome. to do it. 
it was a very pleasant day. Yeah, I uh the whole like setup process was like super it was exciting when I plugged it in and I opened it and it said, Hi, welcome to Xbox and then it said, Use your phone app to set up and it was like very uneventful. And it, mm-hmm. then it just popped up and it looked like I was playing my Xbox One again. I'm like, oh, it just did well, it. Okay. Just well. it. There was that moment where it's like, do you want to import your old settings or do you want to get new ones? And I was like, I kind of want to get new ones. I was like, but also, why? why what, what do I want to do? I want to go and set up right. the resolution mm-hmm. again. It's like, eh, just take them. Buy it. Yeah. Buy, I, buy it. When I get mine, I'm, yeah, I'm going to pick my settings I already have because. Because my I have like all those pins and and stuff on my and folders on my uh, main screen thing to flip through, and I don't want to go through adding all those games to the 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 uh, designated pins again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pages. Because by, uh, by the way, Xbox Series X still does not automatically update my games. Just it like didn't my ask Xbox me one. again too. It, yeah, it was like it's like, do you want to do this or this? And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make sure I pick this this time, but it still doesn't seem to happen. Yeah, I'm like this is like the one feature that I need to work, and it doesn't work <laughs> yeah, on either console. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know what's what's up with that because it used to work for me all the time. Like I never have had to worry about it. It's within the last like couple of updates of the UI. Yeah. It it used to work for me all the time, and then when we got this like the new one, it's when it stopped working, like the yeah. current so one. So I just wonder if there's, I don't know. Let me tell you as well that Call of Duty, specifically Warzone, every time I go into that game, it like loads into the menu, does the thing, and then it like at some point it's just like, hey, uh, unable to connect to server, so I hit OK. And then it's like reload the page, and then it's like, hey, an update's required. And it's like kicks you to the main menu, and then it's yep. like a progress bar just goes applying update, and it just immediately goes, and it's like, and then I have to go through the whole thing again. Yep. And someone has to be able to figure that out that before the game launches, that it just looks to see if it needs to do anything with an update or refresh itself and mm-hmm. just do it. The same way yeah. that whenever you quit out of Destiny, or like you stop playing Destiny for the day, then you come back in and you load in. And it's like, oh, we couldn't. You, you got kicked because you well, weren't able to do whatever. Like just, yeah. That's that's has like I don't know anybody that when they're done playing Destiny that they go to like the loads their ghost and then it's like okay I'm gonna go to my settings I'm gonna log out and quit playing like no one do, I maybe someone does I can't imagine it though like yeah someone's that... gonna be able to figure out live games. And have a way that I don't have to get an error message every time I boot in again. Yep, that's been that's been plugging the Call of Duty franchise for four or five games now. That that's happened where every single time you start up the game, <coughs> it always will. It, it, like literally, you could play it on Thursday night and then boot it up on Friday afternoon, and it will tell you that it needs to update. It is ridiculous. I don't get why they do it. But yeah, like every single Call of Duty game for the last like couple of years now has done that where when you every time you load that game up, it it's got to update every single time you play it and it's stupid. <laughs> and I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't get it either. But uh well, I guess since we're kind of just talking about this series X and S. By the way, Josh, you Tell us By the about way, Corey. Tell us about the Series S, because I mean we're all talking um, about the Series X, but you, you're the only one that got a Series S so far. So I, I mean, it largely works the exact same. Uh, uh, the comparison I would make is definitely, I mean, it's a bigger gulf, obviously, but the One X to the One S, uh, mm-hmm. I think that's an apt comparison here. Uh, it's definitely not as powerful because. It can it can put out at 4K on certain games, I guess, if it tries really, really hard. But the benchmark yeah. is 1440, obviously. Uh, some games are even going to go 1080 so they can get that 60 frames in, um, which I think is pretty awesome. Like, Chelsea was playing Sea of Thieves earlier, and I was watching her play it, and it looks so fluid on there. Like, it's just like I would have booted it up on my X, except the X has the 4K. Uh, 
yeah. I think the biggest thing is just, man, the fast load and quick resume work on it really, really well. Um, almost parody with Series X. Uh, it's definitely a worthy machine, uh, not just for people who are picking up for to have an Xbox as a second console or as a Game Pass machine, but I think like in general, it's a really, really worthy budget conscious alternative to entering this ecosystem it's yeah. awesome uh the digital only thing like it doesn't i it doesn't bother me as much now seeing it up close i mean this is this is such a small console it's like two it's two controllers wide that's it like mm-hmm. it, it's so small i love the small form factor of that the x was smaller than i thought it was going to be um i love it I, I love just the design team hats off to you man yeah mm-hmm. i uh i'm probably gonna try to get an s at some point for mm-hmm. i was thinking like i was thinking the the office but i think an s would be fine in the living room and I play you leave my x in the office on this awesome monitor to take full capability like full you know yeah whatever mm-hmm. Uh, I definitely love that stream, streaming media on it too also puts out at 4K, which is really nice. Yeah, that's... not that we have a 4K TV in there, but even on yeah. a 1080p TV, it looks incredible. Yeah, I uh, yeah. I saw my Xbox One X hooked up in my office for yeah. like just for the streaming stuff uh, right now. You know, because like sometimes like the Browns played today, and I was sitting in my office, and I was like, okay, well, I'll watch the Browns while I work on some stuff. You know, and. Mm-hmm. It was it was kind of nice. <laughs> so, uh, we have some questions about these boxes. Uh, we'll answer the in the doc. We'll answer the pre-show questions last, and we'll answer the Xbox questions now because uh, it's relevant. Deshaun yeah, Malone, yeah. our friend Deshaun Malone, our friend, our buddy, our pal. We He's, love Deshaun. He says, mm-hmm. "Hey y'all, I got my Series Hi. S, and I I gotta say." This little box is so powerful. All my games run like a dream. Uh, what are y'all's thoughts on the S? Uh, Josh, you kind of said yours thoughts already. Mm. I'm actually I've been watching a lot of people who are using their uh, S's on YouTube. Like I know Paris Lily had a really good uh, a thing about the S. Uh, a couple other people did. Like it's making me more and more like really want this box just to have one uh my cousin got one too he loves it he's like man just switching between like two or three games at a time is like Mm -hmm. it's so awesome i'm like yeah it's pretty pretty nice and they you know like they've been saying too that since you know you've got smaller um files being loaded that that some games actually load faster on it so you know just because of the fact that it's not having to load 4k assets which it, you know is is fine, but I feel I feel like just from what I've seen so far and stuff, and you know people posting that, <laughs> you know like it, it's I mean you get you could get a little bit faster, you know we're not quite to cartridge, but fast, but it's you know it's pretty fast. <laughs> you don't have to worry wait about you know wait for things much anymore. Yeah. Uh... I mean, on my X, I loaded up Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I timed it on my... I Before I got the box, I did some... I took some notes. Took some notes. Yeah. Loaded up some games that I usually play. Destiny took a little over two minutes to load into. Uh, it took me l- less than 30 seconds to get to the character select screen and load into the game. I was yeah. like, man, this is, this is awesome. Assassin's Creed Odyssey took me about 19 seconds as opposed to a little mm-hmm. under a minute. Which was awesome, uh, you know. Those are kind of the big two. Gears Five loaded up almost instantly after the the splash screens. Um, I think it took like seven or eight seconds. So that was that was pretty awesome too. So I mean, load times are awesome. <laughs> Switching between yeah. those games, uh, just you know, quick resume, whatever. Took t- I mean, takes like five seconds. Big... Yeah. I would say that's probably the biggest selling point to me for an S is if you don't have the budget for an X, you can save $200 or if this is going to be your second console and like PS five mm-hmm. is going to be your main one where you're playing like all your, all your third parties, but you just want to, you want to get in on game pass. You want to play those Microsoft exclusives, maybe some halo mm-hmm. when it comes out. 
Uh, the only real knock I think I have on the Series S is the hard drive. I do mm-hmm. think that once you load the OS on there, having only 360 gigs is pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, we're sitting here, I because I'm one of those who is very critical of, even though there's new tech in it, of the PS5s after the UI, you only have like 520 something, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, that's And I'm like, that's simply not enough. Like one terabyte, even without the ui on it is still not enough in today's day and age i understand why that's the highest you can go mm-hmm. at launch mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. so as to not charge your customers a ton these are you know mpme4 um but still it's it's bad uh i'm gonna be buying one of those expansion cards pretty soon i think it's also made me be really selective with what i put on both consoles um on hers right now we just have sea of thieves destiny and minecraft installed and that's already taken up a third of the hard drive mm-hmm. yeah i think i have just those three things. I, I did get an expansion card and i'm really happy that i did mm-hmm. uh but i've been real like i've been really picky and choosy on which games go on which drive like the games are going to play yeah. play a lot are going on the internal drive like destiny gears halo uh you know sea of thieves is on that drive like my main games are going on the internal drive, the external drive and putting all the single player games that I have interest in playing within the next, you know, three to six months. Uh, and then my external drive, like my external USB drive that I use for my Xbox one X is just my, and now it's just my 360 and original Xbox games, uh, Mm -hmm. which is slim, but you know, I've, I've been really selective about what I'm putting on this thing now. Uh, but I only play a handful of games at one time anymore. Um, uh, so, like, I load it up with pretty much everything that I would normally load on my Xbox. On And I just put the drive. It's, I have the expansion drive, too, so I'm not really crammed on space. The downside is that the three of the games that I play regularly are almost 200 gigs each. Mm-hmm. I guess Des- Destiny just got a lot smaller. Um but yeah, but it'll grow. Just, it, it'll grow. grow. Call of, we talked about Call of Duties. Like right now, Call of Duty right now is 230 gigs on my drive. Uh, and I have the Master Chief Collection, which is what, around 120, 130. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I have Destiny on there. Uh, so, I mean, that's like that would basically kill my internal drive if that's all I had. And I just don't feel comfortable operating with no wiggle room because like, those games aren't going anywhere. Yeah. If I had to, I'm not going to move them back and forth. And yeah. I'm not going to uh, uninstall and reinstall every. Yeah. And week. that's the exact reason why I have not reinstalled Master Chief Collection. As much as I want to play it, 117 gigs. That's that's a hard pill for me to swallow right now. And it's yeah. probably going to grow uh, this week. Yeah. Here's... Yeah, I know. Which is why it's an even harder pill to swallow. Here are the games I have on my internal drive, and I have 200. I have 200. <laughs> 12 gigs left i have i have uh cross code i have destiny 2 forza horizon 4 gears 5 gears tactics halo 5 halo master chief collection monster hunter ori planet coaster sea of thieves and tetris uh yeah i mean i've my only notable game is our horizon 4 gears 5 will of wisps uh star wars squadrons and destiny 2 mm-hmm. other than that every game the only other like three or four games i have are all five gigs or under mm-hmm. um and i've used up over a third of my drive just barely but still like next gen like i'm when the next gen update for destiny comes and when it comes for master chief collection like i'm terrified i'm absolutely terrified for how big those are gonna be yeah yeah uh, Master Chief Collection, especially because yeah, that's going to be. I feel like that's going to be a pretty big update. There's part of me that wants to get an S just so I can stream with my capture card. Because mm-hmm. anytime you're thinking about a capture card, they're all USB 2.0, so you're compromising in some way. And I play mostly shooters, so any of those shooters that Destiny is going to be 120 for Crucible. Master Chief Collection is going to be 120. Call of Duty is 120 right now, frames per second. Those are all things that I wouldn't be able to do if I were to play uh, at 4K. Mm -hmm. So part of me really wants to get an S, dump those games all onto my external drive, and then bounce back and forth. But then I don't even... I don't think I'd ever play those games 
on my big TV. Because, again, if I'm playing competitive, I want the frames. I want that smaller TV. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I don't know where I'm at. I really want to have a reason to buy an S, but I don't think I truly have one. Yeah. Well, I don't either. I just, you know, it's, it's for all the same reasons that you said, like the streaming box, the, you know, put three or four games on this and just let it sit there or use and swap the external drive back and forth between the two consoles. 300 bucks is just such a great price point. I know a brand new <laughs> console that can do so much for so many people. I know. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just, man, I want like it would be my it, it would be a streaming box. You know, it would be the box that I stream from and, and it would give me more motivation to stream because so I don't keep having to carry this box back and forth. Yeah. Um, well, and the thing is, is there's, you know, like, especially with a lot of people, um, you know, like me, I've adopt, I've adapted or adopted uh, playing on, on a monitor. I don't play on, I haven't played an Xbox on a TV in years now. Like, I just, I just can't, it's, it, I just don't, you know, like, I just don't like the, the late, the latency of the TV and the, yeah, it's just not as, not as great. And, and the thing right now is if you have the series S, you have a lot of options for monitors for that, that can handle any, anything and everything that can do. You know, and I mean, yes, the Series X as well, but there's there's like little to no monitors that do 4K at, at 120, you know, and 120 frames per second. You know, some of them may do 120 hertz, but I don't even know if they, you know, if they actually have a 2.1 uh, USB, you know, and stuff or not USB, but uh, HDMI. But so, you know, like that's the thing is like I was trying to look and see like because I would like to get a different monitor for the Series X, something that can actually like, you know, let me do everything to its full potential. Mm -hmm. And I'm having a hard time finding anything. It's like only TVs really right now that are that are, you know, available. Just get the the best. uh, Just get the monitor that Joe recommended me and Amazon will send you the better one. Yeah, you can't, you can't guarantee that. I wish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, my my monitor that I have is still considered like they rank it like anywhere from from uh, fourth to like third place and uh, and uh, like you know the best monitor to get for a Series X, you know, or like I've checked like different things online and and. Uh, yeah, like the I mean the one I have supposedly is fine. I mean it does HDMR, it has free sync, which you don't want G Sync because the Xbox doesn't support that. You're not gonna get the best out of that and you're gonna notice tearing and stuff like that happening if you don't have that. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I guess we'll see. We'll see once I actually get mine, you know, like whether whether maybe I won't need anything more, but yeah uh we have a couple more questions here uh oh crap where'd it go all right brian plubner 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 he says what was the first game you booted up on the console uh destiny because it was the one that was it was the one that was done first (laughs) destiny yeah uh, uh, yeah, Joe, Joe and I got ours with the expansion literally dropping. I played the first mission on my 1S before we all got booted to orbit. Um, mm-hmm. The like Everybody playing, uh, something like 400, 400 or 500,000 of us all got kicked to orbit at the same time. <laughs> um, I just waited for my Series X at that point. It got here maybe an hour later, and I just was like, alright, well, I'm going to install this. Forget it. I'm not, I'm not going back to my 1S now, and Oh man, you you just I, can't back after that fast. Yeah, moment. you cannot go back. Like I I I have a couple games still on my Xbox One X, and I was like trying to see like, oh my gosh, dude, the load times like can't go it's back. So bad. The un like the the uneven frame rates. No, no. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, I'm how, how did spoiled. You, I'm like how did you how did you go how did you do that like how do you how did I play on this, you know. 
Ugh. So it's like that, when I went back and I played a double seven on 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 the N sixty four and and like explosions went off and the whole entire the frame rate dropped to like one frame per oh, second. Oh, you were playing the like, slideshow with the explosion. I was like, yeah. How I was like, how the hell did we ever enjoy this? <laughs> but I I do have. I do have one question for you guys. It, let's say they gave you some kind of like thing that that would like you could plug that new hard drive, the like the um the uh, proprietary one. Yeah. Like they gave gave you something you could actually plug that into, hook it into your your Xbox One X and start loading stuff onto that, preloading stuff onto that before you got your your series x like would would if there was a way that they could have did that would that have made it worth more worth the 200 dollars network <laughs> your network yeah gonna be you're, a better option because you're still your yeah. bottleneck is your xbox and not that yeah. drive yeah 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 well, I, uh... but i no, but i mean i mean yeah like i mean like however you want to but like w- like that would have been cool if there was a way that you could actually preload through your your old console gotcha. preload the new I mean you kind of you know, the the series X versions of those games onto that drive before yeah. you know mm. and then plug it in and then you've already got those things on it yeah um uh, I wasn't it's too anticip- bad they couldn't have figured a way to way to do something like that I was not anticipating those updates to be that big though like I, yeah. I I mean I knew they were going to be like Okay, they're going to be probably a couple gigs, probably maybe ten, but I, yeah. I wasn't expecting gears to be like basically. Sea of Thieves is like thirty three, yeah, on top of the fifteen that it already is. Yeah, it was. They, gonna, were, they were big. So. I'm going to be honest with you though. I wonder. I wonder if it's if it if it will continue to be like this or well. Or I mean, at this point, because these games technically these games technically aren't made for that console yes yeah. they they are that console's version but they're not well they're not actually made for that console well like, the- theoretically anything you buy now on this box you'll just download that version of the game and not have to do the yeah. update so yeah. yeah yeah i mean jesse when you go to update watchdogs that'll probably be like okay this is this is what's happening now but it won't ever yeah after you make that transfer it's not going to be this bad again you know yeah so. yeah no which is yeah and that's, that's i mean not the that it was game i'm gonna download not that it was bad it only wait. took me it only took me like a day to update everything right like i mean yeah i played destiny which... i left my xbox on all night and day to update the rest of the stuff and like it's everything's everything was ready to go tonight by like five o'clock. So I mean, you know, you yeah, just got to make sure. Fair, you... Anytime I've gotten a new phone, it's taken me about a whole day to get it all completely, you know, up to snuff the way I want it. Have everything re-downloaded on it or whatever. Make sure all my contacts are there. Make sure everything's logged in. Make sure you know, like, yeah. so I mean, I, yeah, I, I completely. You know, like get it at this point, you know, like getting a phone a couple of times throughout, you know, throughout my life now, it's I've I've kind of gotten accustomed to this kind of thing with technology of just like having to basically waste a whole day (laughs) just to get it to where you want it. I got a new phone, too. Oh, Oh, did you? I did. (laughs) Did you finally get it all updated? (laughs) Yeah, it was. I mean, I don't, I don't know how long it took or anything like that, but on I got uh, the new iPhone 12 Pro Max, whatever the biggest one is. Oh, okay. But nice. I, uh, it's adjectives here. Yeah. Adjective, yeah. adjective, adjective. <laughs> iPhone adjective. <laughs> Did it yeah. come with the uh, Game Pass uh, <laughs> loaded on it? <laughs> no, I wish. Man, that's the one thing that I will, like, it's such a bummer that I can have the Apple TV app on my Xbox, but I can't have like the like games from my Xbox on my iPhone. Like, yeah, just guys, come yeah. on. Well, 
So that that's the thing actually uh, that I was wondering. I was wondering. So like, can you not have the the Xbox app on there at all? The Xbox app is fine. The Game Pass app is okay. fine. It's specifically okay. the X Cloud game streaming service. app. Game streaming okay. is that I can't I can't have. Okay, because yeah, yeah, because because the because the X Cloud and all that is done through the Game Pass app. You know, on Android, mm-hmm. um, and you can actually stream like from your console through the Xbox app, though. Yeah, I you have to use the regular Xbox. You can app do that on. Stream. You can do yeah, remote. You can play. do that on. I can yeah. do remote okay. play. I got the. Okay, uh, I got... At least you can do because I mean that's kind of nice is just being able to play any of the games you own from home on there. Yeah, honestly, as I, I'll t- I, I, use more. I don't go anywhere anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I do. Yeah. I did get a clip. I did buy a clip this weekend for my phone to play. Yeah, because uh, I'll be able to play the games while we're watching TV or something. I'll just pop it on my. Like, if I need to grind out a quest in Destiny or something, that's that mm-hmm. phone clip will be just fine. I'm not yeah. worried about, you know, super uh, fidelity to you know do some patrols or something. You know. Not that I'm going to go in there and go flawless in trials on my phone clip, but you might. I could. Yeah, you I mean, know. the only the only thing that does suck is I do wish that you could change the field of view. You, <laughs> I mean, you will be able to soon. You could do Hopefully, it on the new yeah. Call of Duty. You can change the field of view. Yeah. Okay. You'll and, because, yeah, like when you're playing it on your phone, that, that screen can get pretty pretty minuscule like like trying to see what you're doing but i mean you don't want to play call of duty on your streaming from your xbox to your phone yeah it's single player yeah yeah um, we do have one more question here uh ashley davidson writes in and says how does it compare to the 1s and 1x uh what games show this off the most um, I, th- I think the actual Xbox interface is right now probably the best showcase of the difference between the the One S and the One X. Yeah, yeah, I would say I would say everything is really yeah. snappy and re- like I can actually see what updates that need to happen since they won't do it automatically. I can actually go in and see uh, which uh, ones are there. I will say I think that Forza Horizon Four clearly looks better on the Series X over the Series S. Um, the Series S feels like it's a little bit more of a polished up version of the 1S and 1X versions. Series X plays, looks, and handles like it's a brand new game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I do. Um, it's fantastic. I do want to say the stuff I've seen from Assassin's Creed Valhalla looks really great, yeah. too. I haven't played it yet. I would like to play it soon. Uh, I mean, I was like, my excitement started like way up here. And then over time, it just kind of went down, 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 down. And now that I see people playing, mm-hmm. it's like going right back up. And I'm like, oh, gosh. For me, for me, like comparing like how um, uh, like Miles Morales and stuff looks on the PS5 and comparing uh, Watch Dogs playing at 4K, you know, 60 with ray tracing on Xbox series x like it looks phenomenal like in my opinion so far from what i've seen of games playing on the series x like the watchdogs definitely showcases the the uh the power of the ray tracing and all that stuff all in that game like you know it's not running at only 30 frames per second it's not you know to get that ray tracing it's actually doing 4k 60 and getting ray tracing you know, like it's, is it running it, at sixty on this Series X? I be, I believe so. Because uh, well, I mean, according to the uh, like the videos that I've been watching, they say that it was four K sixty, uh, with ray tracing. Uh, let me check, but I I could have swore that that's what they had in the the thing. But anyways, like I, either way, I mean, it, it, like that game just like you know you walk past windows and. And, you know, I'm playing it on the regular 1X, and, like, when you walk up to a car window, it's just a gray, like, like stupid-looking, you know, thing that you can't see any reflection in. But you go on there, and, like, every single window in, in the entire uh, city is just, like, reflecting everything that's outside of it. And it's it just looks phenomenal. 
that game it just looks awesome every puddle you can see the reflections of things in it like cars as they're driving over them and it, like it just looks awesome it's so weird that this generation getting a new console i specifically remember when i got like my playstation 4 i was like jones and or like hard like i was just searching for like new games to look at any game i think any x or playstation launch game that came out on that generation i bought just to like i want to see what this looks like i want to see what this looks like i want to see what i and like i had like five or six games that i purchased that like i played maybe 25 percent of a couple of them i finished and i would say this is the first generation that i and i would say that i'm content that I was more excited to go back and play the games that I already play, yeah. which is weird. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, st- I wanna, I wanna see if, um, you know, the AI learning stuff. Like if that improves how, uh, you know, like uh, something like my favorite game, uh, Far Cry Five looks. You know, like I'm curious how how those games that no one's really thinking about like you know showing off or talking about that you know that i loved you know in the in on this last generation and you know and just because the xbox has that ability to to you know make things look better without them actually having to do any work on it per se uh you know, by by devs or whatever is what makes me interested most on like you yeah. know like testing things on it. I'm actually downloading the Gears Ultimate Edition, the first like the remake of the first game because they that was like the game they were pushing that this AI was gonna you know do stuff with. So, yeah. um, I will I, I'll probably talk a little bit about that next week. Uh. But that's, I mean, that, like you said, that that's the game that they were pushing that these this AI was gonna like change to auto HDR mm-hmm. in sixty frames a second and mm-hmm. uh, that kind of stuff. So, um, actually, we do have a couple more question, a couple more questions. Uh, one, a couple from Twitter. Uh, <clears throat> one's, a, I think, one's a jokey one. I'm not gonna lie, unless anybody did try this. Uh, Jeff and- James from. Oh. What what were you gonna say, Jesse? Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, it, it is. It, so it is thirty frames per <clears> second <throat> on Xbox Two, but um, I yeah. The, see, that's the thing is, it's so hard. Some of those videos, they're saying stuff that isn't true on it, just I think to get attention. Yeah. Like there was a there was someone claiming that you know like Spider Man was running at four K sixty frames, you know, with ray tracing, and it's like no, I from what I heard that is impossible <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh it's, uh it's hard to all right so uh jeff james from the diggity podcast he says when vaped in can it can it indeed produce a vape nato you're done you're not allowed to ask any more questions thank you for your <laughs> submission he's canadian he's he doesn't know any better <laughs> oi oi you're not allowed to ask any more questions <laughs> Unless you said uh, the authentic Canadian maple syrup. I do not think I do not I did not vape into my Xbox and Xbox has tweeted out that you should not vape into your Xbox, so uh Yes. I, I really hate that we're dumb enough as a as a human race that we had to tweet that out. Yeah. It does well, not be hopeful for the next generation. Yeah. So Well the, the, the worst part about it is is people that are so desperate to try to uh make the Series X look bad that they gotta blow some you know vapor into it and then claim that it's on fire yeah well <laughs> i think it's just attention i don't think they were trying yeah. to make it, it was a bad t- the guy was like i'm a big xbox fan i did it as a joke yeah yeah uh, i mean it, just... it made all of us turn our heads so yeah it turned my head the I, other way i didn't yeah. even see it i've i've heard i heard about it but i never even seen the the tweet or any of it the, i've the just last that i had upon realizing like Oh my God, that is a lot I spoke to. Oh my God, if it was really an electrical fire, it would look nothing like this. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. our last question about the Xbox itself uh, comes from Austin Cable. He's over on the uh, on Crossroads, the PlayStation podcast. So, if you're interested in PS5, I know Leron just got one, so uh, you can head on over there to listen to, to check that out. But uh, 
Austin says, since the user interface on the Xbox One and the and the Xbox Series X is the same, does it take away from a new console experience? Um, yes and no. I was a little, like, I kind of forgot I was playing my Xbox Series X a little bit because, like, just because everything's literally the same. You know, like, the store is the same, the user interface is the same, the settings menu is the same. Uh, so... Yeah, I'm I'm going to say no. Uh and this is why. At this point, yes, I know we all like to get new OSs. Do you install a new S a new OS and it's not a, not to be a confrontational rhetorical question. Do you install a new <laughs> OS every time that you buy a new graphics card? And the answer I think for 99.99% of the world is going to be no. I really like in these consoles to like you're upgrading your graphics card, like you're getting a PC upgrade. I actually really like the cohesion between the two because if I needed to jump back, then that would be great. Yeah. Uh, which the first couple days I was doing to you know to do transfers and whatnot, and you know that's that's still all we had hooked up in the bedroom. Um, that's that of course was our streaming box in there, but. No, I, I don't think you need... I think the complaints about, oh, the controller didn't innovate enough, the controller didn't innovate enough, the, and the UI didn't innovate enough, like, okay, why mess with the best that you've done? I, um, I'm i glad... Battery I, life. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I, I'm glad I like, knew how to do literally everything when I turned the box on. I'm not yeah. going to lie. <laughs> I, I liked it. It was the first console that I've owned where I'm not hunting for things. Yeah. Uh, um... I instead did my hunting like earlier that day because somehow my camera got turned off and I'd figure out how to turn it back on. Uh, um, and it's in a really obscure setting, but no, I, I don't think so. Like this is, I saw somebody, I think it might've been Andrea from what's good who said that she kind of thinks of this as like jumping from an iPhone 11 to an iPhone 12, which I don't think I necessarily agree with, but I do agree. Like this is, this is simultaneously one of the biggest leaps we've taken forward and also like the easiest step to take forward. I think we've ever done in gaming mm -hmm. because they large both Sony and Microsoft largely kept their uh, internal development process the same. There's a reason why they're both full backwards compatible with previous gen or with the, pre the last gen and why Xbox can still produce regular Xbox and 360 backwards compatible titles. Mm -hmm. it, it's all built on the same code now, and that's huge. Yeah, that lets you port it over. Um, but no, I, I don't think that it's. I don't think it's a big deal. At I all. mean, even when I got my Xbox, my excitement, like like, I don't want to say the peak excitement, but like when I was in the store and they were like ringing it out and getting it, like putting it in a bag for me. I was extremely excited, but as soon as I got home and as much as I wanted to like celebrate the console or what, what have you, like my immediate goal was like, I need to unbag this thing, plug it in and then download destiny so I can play a game. I, I, yeah, I, I like having a different menu and stuff like that, or like upgraded OS. I like, but I want features. I just don't want it to look different because yeah. my goal, as soon as I get that on there is like, a, I want to just play a game. Mm -hmm. I want to well, bypass I all of that. My personal mm -hmm. conspiracy is that they're going because Xbox does like four UI refreshes a generation. It seems. Mm -hmm. um, I think you get a redesign of the UI as early as next fall once they officially drop support for their games coming to Xbox One. I yeah. think that mm -hmm. you see them say, "Okay, mm -hmm. hey guys, take a look at this. It's been in beta for a little while. Like preview members have had access to it, but we're going to release it to everyone now." That. Yeah is and i mean you know we we've talked about on tower casuals we feel like the same thing's gonna happen with destiny too a lot of things are kind of in limbo and i'm really glad that we're able to so easily pick up from things we're familiar with mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. new content and new consoles new electronics but i definitely also see the side of at a certain point that is part of the excitement of a new console uh, mm -hmm. unless you're a nintendo console and up until the switch your uis were awful um Oh, I I don't think it's that big of a deal. I I would argue that the Switch's UI is awful in a different way. Worse. <laughs> yeah. I, I, would, I would definitely say though. I think anybody who's making a huge Their fuss store is about, good. <laughs> the people who are making a huge fuss about the uh, console UI or about the controller, like really, like I the the Xbox One controller was pretty universally loved. 
and they simply made it better. That D-pad I don't is... want them to change it. I See, don't want them to change I, it. <laughs> I think I actually prefer the Xbox One controller over the Series X controller in some ways. Really? Yeah, and just in like, I, and maybe it's just because I haven't used the Xbox Series X controller enough. You know, like the D-pad is still like a little... I'm not used to the the like weird D pad that they added to it. The I will um, love it. The grip so on much. the back. I don't like controllers with the grip love on it. the back. <laughs> I love see, it. Or see, he's describing I love everything it. that I like. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, look, I I'm sure in a week I won't even notice. You know, it's just like I've used the same controller for three and a half years, right? Mm-hmm. That Jesse actually turned me on to that one, the gray with the green sticks, Jesse. Mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. used it about as long as like we've been yeah. doing this show, and like now I'm switching to this brand new controller with fresh sticks, and you know. But yeah. you don't have to. I know I don't have to. I have I have it plugged in as my second That's controller what's great. now. But I mean, I guess just my last thing uh, I would say is I like that they took a lot of the features people liked about the Elite controllers and moved them to the regular ones. Yeah, it didn't cost them anything extra. They're not upcharging them or anything. Mm-hmm. Um. And if we're going to sit here and get upset about, oh, well, you know, controllers staying the same, I mean, look at the dual shocks up until the dual set, the dual sense that we have now. Look at the dual shock controllers like those pretty largely stayed about the same, like the, the light bar nonwithstanding. They stayed about the same. And the touchpad. I, Don't forget about have, the touchpad that brought up your oh, map. Yeah. The, what do you freaking well, do? I have a question for you guys, though, about the controller. Um, how is the stiffness on the, the joysticks? Is it about the same as the is the uh, the uh, the one the Xbox One, or is it a little bit stiffer? I'd say it's a little more. St- I think it's stiffer. Uh, I, it's okay. it's a little stiffer. Uh, Although that could okay. just be Which I I'm like. used to. I like a controller that's three and a half years old. Also, hey, it's not only that. It's also these are brand new controllers. We haven't broken them in nearly as much as we did with the other yeah. controllers. Yeah. So, yeah. But like that's one thing I loved. I love about my uh, my, you know the the pro the or whatever the um, elite whatever it's called. Yeah, elite two is the like just being able to you know turn that and make it make the sticks really stiff they were just really smart and they took some of the features that people really really like about Mm -hmm. uh, the uh the what do you call it the uh elite controller yeah and they put them on a you know common person's controller i guess because like i'm not buying an elite controller like i'd like one but the thought of spending like 150 200 bucks on a controller nauseates me so like that's you could cool. buy a that's whole other cool. console for that almost now. Or a memory almost, card. Yeah, you could buy a memory card or an Xbox Series S for that. It's ridiculous. So I'm, I'm honestly still thinking about going to the, my local uh, um, pawn shop place and see if they still have that the the first Elite controller. They had it for sixty bucks only. So oh, wow. I was thinking I thinking about buying it, but. Uh, <sighs> All right, we're going to kind of get into the just some other things for the show. Uh, the sh- stuff we normally answer at the beginning of the show. Greg Osterman the third. Our boy Greg. Greg E3. Greg and his snack questions have become some of my favorite things about this show. Uh, these are all food <laughs> questions. People are are on the on the Greg food yes. train. He says yeah, the snack train. He says uh, it, uh, I thought Nintendo. I thought Snack Tendo was a Pow Block segment. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ars- yeah. More like Arsenal snacks. Am I right? Nice, nice, Josh. <laughs> nice. I couldn't resist. I uh, got the S in there too. Nice. Got it. <laughs> nice. Sorry, uh, nice. Greg Osterman the third. He says, "Hey guys, really appreciate the answers to my dumb food questions. So here's another one. What are your thoughts on cheesecake? Cheesecake." Oh, uh, pro delicious. cheesecake. Uh, uh, yeah. Stay away from the cheesecake factory and their nonsense. Cheesecake is—it's an A. Yeah. It's an A tier dessert. It's not quite yeah. S tier, but it's an A tier. It can go S tier if you have the right crust on it or the yeah, right yeah. flavors. Like, listen, man, pumpkin cheesecake comes around, and I just—I do—I do unspeakable acts for pumpkin cheesecake. Okay. 
You give me a good Oreo cheesecake. Oh, yeah, Oreo cheesecake. Real bad things are going to start. I mean, good things for me, but bad things could start happening. I'm just going to say I think Oreo cheesecake. real adult real fast. I'm just going to say I think Oreo cheesecake is how my wife got pregnant the first time. I'm just going to throw that out there. (laughs) just going to throw that. Who who made your cheesecake? (laughs) It's the, is it the white stuff in the middle? Oh, God. <laughs> Josh just turns around. Right. Wait. Josh, uh, this will be great for anybody that's listening. Josh, you need to put a mirror on that door so when you yeah, turn so around, you can just. <laughs> 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 I will buy a mirror off of Amazon and send it Just, to you. Yeah, give them the dimensions of that section of the door. No, don't order it off of Amazon. They might. He, at least you'll get it before yeah. December thirty yeah, first. Yeah, it might get delayed until twenty twenty one, along with Cyberpunk. Oh, man. Uh, Sam Hall writes and he says, "What's the most underappreciated food?" Oh. Fortune okay, cookies. so when we say food, are we saying like a specific food or a food group? Like, uh, it just says food. They're, they're so not, I... but would we say like, it, uh, is it a whole group? Like, are we saying that like ta- like uh, tacos are underrated or what? Or who's like underrating a taco? Mexican as a whole, I, I I don't know. There are horrible people out in this world, Corey. <sighs> well, the, I, I don't want to know I, those I'm, people. People who I'm do not like tacos, like a meal. I'm thinking he's just like a specific meal, like well, why don't we like all just a, you say know, what like we think. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah. With, I'm with Joe. Yeah, that's uh, easy enough. Uh, I don't. Somebody want to go first? I don't know. I'll go. I'll go first. I think broccoli is severely underrated. Oh, dude, bro- broccoli, gr- great, great vegetable. You, I'm you gonna go one. Cheese on it. I'm gonna go one further. I think asparagus is underrated. I agree. I think it's great. Nope, wrong. Wrong. It's right oh. where it belongs. What is that? What about in my Brussels? belly? In the, in the trash. Brussels, Brussels sprouts, sprouts are amazing. If you cook your Brussels beans. sprouts correctly, they, they fucking they gross. flake off. They form those little flaky. Yeah. They, oh, so good. You put a, yeah. you put like a Ugh. little bit of butter where they get kind of crispy, and you put some you know Lowry seasoning salt on there. Yeah. Oh. Uh, mustard seed. Yep. What? Yeah. Sardines and mustard sauce. I mean, it's amazing. Mm. Real good. Or or put it in there some sardines and some oil with some Ew. jalapenos. Oh. The sardines all of a sudden. What? <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, they're they they're, until... they're underrated. It's gotta be a <laughs> it's it's a Wisconsin thing. It's gotta be. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no. There's no cheese in those. Uh <laughs> all right. we're we're moving on before we get more weird. Uh Wilson Myers. Because I have nothing that can possibly top that. So Wilson <laughs> Wilson Myers writes in and he says, Hey guys, what's the most important part of a meal? The appetizer? Dessert? The main portion? The plate. The plate. Oh, really holds it all together. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, got, I've got two answers here. Okay. We we can go the, the sensible route. Or we can go the Josh route. Let's do the Josh route. I'm interested in this. Route. The Josh route is the accompanying cocktail. Okay, like mm-hmm. you, you can have a great meal, but what really accents it is your adult beverage of choice. If you don't have the right beer, the right wine, the right custom cocktail, your meal is just not going to be as good as it could possibly be, my friends. Now, the sensible route is every single one of those is equal because if even one of them falters, you're going to have a shitty meal. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I will extremely personalize my answer as well and say the most impar- important part of the meal is the crust. <laughs> the crust. Because <laughs> the uh, pizza is all three to me. Yeah. Look, the pizza. <laughs> look, okay, Joe, yeah. since we're on the subject of pizza, yeah. do you like a good dry crust with flavor or do you like an oily, greasy, just thick, buttery crust? So. If it's me personally, I like a more hand tossed, thin, thinner style crust, but a slightly thick, like the, when you get to the actual crust part, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's a little bit bigger. Um, more of like a Neapolitan style. It's just like a, like almost like a non where it's just like kind of like. Bu- Mamma mia! <laughs> there you go. Uh, but I would say less of the oily. Mm-hmm. I do a little drizzle of olive oil on top. 
but that's about the extent of the oil. Mm-hmm. I I enjoy dry crust with like like when when I used to work at Domino's, we used to it was like a hand to- like when we do the hand toss stuff, like we would run it through like some cornmeal, and it was kind of mm-hmm. like eating delicious sandpaper. I guess you would say on the Corey, bottom. Cor- uh, it does. It, Domino's does taste like sandpaper on the bottom. Can confirm. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure I could sand my desk down with a piece of that cheese pizza. But <laughs> did you ever like? toss the dough around yeah my cousin it, ta- was it was it like that episode of the office where michael scott does that and he hits the ceiling fan and it just flies across the room <laughs> um, was that an accurate to life experience for you for it? it no but i did throw it high up that it got stuck to the ceiling and it fell down onto like the like the protective window where like customers come in and like stand behind <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you just like so you like heated that across the restaurant? <laughs> kind of. I mean, yeah, kind of. It was it was look. Dude, he yotened the pizza dough. Look, it was I was young, okay? It was uh I was trying to impress people with my skills of tossing pizza, which by the way does not impress anybody, okay? Just it it doesn't, especially when you work at a Domino's. Right, it just doesn't impress anybody. But I mean, listen, we we all made mistakes in food service when we were young. Mine was eating a chicken tender, and our big boss walked in for the arena, and he looked at me. He goes, he goes, he just looked at me, and without skipping a beat, it's my first day of work. He goes, "The fuck are you doing?" And I just walked away from him and put the chicken tender in my pocket and kept walking. In your and he's, like, he's like, he's like, he's like oh, where's that kid going? Go get him! Go get him back! And I like went and stood in the big walk-in fridge and like just stood in the back of it. And my my supervisor comes in and is like, "All right, come on, uh, Josh, Josh, the fuck are you doing? Come on, get out of there. Jack wants to talk to you." And I was like, "All right, just let me finish this chicken tender." She's like, "No, you can't." finish the chicken tender throw it away and like dust out your pockets throw away the evidence <laughs> that's insane <laughs> yeah, it was the, the first only... time in two years he had walked into the kitchen apparently that's uh, funny we like when i when i was working at, at the restaurant i think the stupidest thing that i did was me and my friend like took uh the broken pieces of crayons from out on, out on the the front like area for the kids, and I was like putting it into like the butter, the little empty butter, uh, you know, like where you get those little square butter packets, and we and I would put them in there and then set them inside the dishwasher, and then it was melting crayons into molds. <laughs> Like yeah. there just for the hell of it. Just when because we, we used to go clean the sweets out at the <laughs> arena. We'd go in there to some of these places with vegetable trays. And no, listen, whenever you put out a vegetable tray, whether it's at a fancy place or a non-fancy place, nobody eats the cherry tomatoes ever. Like yeah. they just they go uneaten. They look bad. So we, we were taking them and we're up on the third level of sweets. And we're throwing them down at the ice for the hockey arena. We're trying to hit them in like some of the circles or like the logos and like assigning point values if you can make it onto the ice. <laughs> um, security just like stood there. They're watching these these tomatoes just rain down because we're sitting with our backs to the wall and just hurling them over our shoulders so like you're just seeing a hand pop up apparently and like a handful of tomatoes go flying we did this for weeks on end and then finally somebody got smart and left the ca- the left the broadcast cameras on and they like they were like scanning and you see like fistfuls of tomatoes come flying out of this and they're like, that's it those are the guys and you just like we both just like threw our hoods up on our hoodies and took off running. Wow. <laughs> so th- to this day, the tomato bandits have never been caught. Oh my God. <laughs> I hope my former boss is listening to this. Seth, if you see that I post this, I love you. I did not mean to cause you any problems, but I was the tomato bandit and the chicken <laughs> finger person. <laughs> chicken finger in your pocket. That's a that's a Frank yeah, Reynolds move if I ever I, listen, I was eighteen, I was afraid of losing my first real job. I was like, Oh but, my god, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get fired so on my first night. You were gonna get rid of the chicken tender. You were I, afraid, you're gonna eat the evidence. I, I didn't know what to do. I just shoved it in my pocket and walked away. I love 
the thought of you on the like who wants this to guy be looked like carmine set. falcone <laughs> from batman begins okay <laughs> The lights go down. You're sitting face to face with another person. Or like, you get to keep your job or chicken tender. And like, the music's like, dun, 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 dun. You're like, I don't know. That chicken tender looks pretty good. <laughs> like, uh, it's it's like that last episode of of uh, of the Mandalorian. Where he... <laughs> Whoa, spoilers! Whoa, whoa. Yeah, when they eat the. No, I'm not. I didn't say anything. And le- if you haven't seen it, it won't make any sense. But if you have, it by will. the way. <laughs> <laughs> this season of The Mandalorian, very good. So good. Very good. <laughs> I did not expect them to have an Arby's tie-in. That was weird, but I'll go with it. Oh. <laughs> Just go with it. Uh, all right. Well, we've got about 10 or 15 minutes left here. Uh, let's wrap the show with what we've been playing. Joe, I'm going to go your way first. I have played two games, Destiny uh, Beyond Light for probably 90% of the time that I've put on the Xbox so far. And the other 10%, I've played the new Call of Duty uh, multiplayer only because it's 120 frames a second. You can switch back and forth between ray tracing, but you have to choose whether you're doing ray tracing or 120 frames a second. Um, so I, I haven't even tried ray tracing. If I play through the campaign, I'll probably turn off the 120 but that's that's all I've been playing. Destiny is, I, I, I we've talked about this online, and you guys talked about, it, but like, I like it. I like I like Beyond Light so far. I have a feeling like there's a lot of stuff in the pipeline for it, but that's that's gonna be my jam for probably another week or so. Next week I'll probably d- dive into Master Chief once it gets the update. What's that? Seventeenth, I think it comes out. With yeah, the it's Wednesday, Tuesday, mm-hmm. Wednesday, Tuesday. one of those days, Tuesday. Yeah, I'll probably jump in then. So when you guys are listening to this on podcast services, it'll be live. There so. you go. <laughs> uh, how is Call of Duty, by the way? I, again, I've only played the multiplayer, but I really like, I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly what you think it is. It feels very like the last Call of Duty in a lot of ways, but the, it, there's a momentum and it feels so much faster than the previous Call of Duty. Um, in a really good way. I like how it feels. There's, it feels like there's more of a weight to things. Um, I like it. I'm really digging it. I played a lot of the beta, though. Um, probably okay. way too much. <laughs> nice. Uh, Jesse, we're going to go your way next. What are you, are you still playing Watch Dogs? Um, I, yeah, I, I haven't played a whole lot of it, though, this week. Um, actually... I I play uh, well. I before the show I played some trials for a little bit just because if you like you, you know uh, it's trials rising. If you like uh, you know like just crazy weird fun games like trials rising is such a good game for that. Especially like uh, like um, burnout like the old burnout games like if you know like if you like that kind of stuff just the just the fun, like crazy nonsense. I was playing this one uh, uh, level where where all it is is you're riding on the bike and then you got to drive into the exploding barrels and then try to aim your guy up with the next exploding barrel to just try to see how far you can blow him, <laughs> blow him up down the line. <laughs> And so, like, you just it just keeps on you you just keep on trying to hit a, a the next exploding barrel and just see how far you can blast <laughs> blast them and that that that's all the map is that, like that one thing is just seeing how far you can get them to go um so like i was just playing that for a little bit um and yeah and like i've i've been playing like mortal shell if you know if again if you uh if you like you know uh dark souls type games or whatever definitely give that a try um, Mortal Shell, it's pretty, it's pretty decent, and I like the changes. Um, uh, let's, uh, yeah, the, there's, uh, in, yeah, Watch Dogs played a little more of. I, I didn't play too much of it though this week, so I'm kind of waiting now. <laughs> it, it sucks though because I don't. That's the only thing that sucks is I don't know how long I'm waiting <laughs> to be able to, you know, finally play these you know, and on the next console, but 
But yeah, like the thing, the nice thing with Watch Dogs though is literally every single uh, person that you can um, uh, recruit is basically uh, is just a, like two more uh, side missions that you can do uh, to 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 recruit them. Sometimes more than that. And since everyone can be recruited, like literally the side missions on that game are infinite. Because you could just keep on just doing that and play, you know, thousands of hours and never even actually play the story. <laughs> in, in you know, in theory. So, so I've just I've just kind of been doing more stuff like that, basically on that game stuff that doesn't really matter a whole lot. Um, and just you know, but still, I'm I'm finding it fun. I it's fun just traversing through the the world and just like finding weird things going on from you know people playing the saxophone and like the middle of you know some kind of area to people sitting down playing hippie guitar music and just sitting and listening to them play music or whatever you know like it's it's got that the, some of those things similar to like what uh gta 5 has you know, like where there's just thing weird things going on in the world that you can just kind of come across. My favorite thing to do, though, is to wait and like look for uh, when like the police and stuff are are um, pushing people down to the ground and handcuffing them. And then they go to call in, uh, call in the, uh, you know, like what's going on. And then I just go run up to the people and then unhandcuff them and then stop the cop from being able to chase them back down and handcuff handcuff them again because they won't go after you if you do that, which which is kind of weird that you can just go and unhandcuff someone and they they don't go after you then. But it's, it's so it's just fun to just mess with people in that in that world like that so um like i was taking a drone the other day and i was just chasing after a guy and running into him with the drone and he'd be like damn damn robots and he's like getting all frustrated with it and i'd just like come and crash dive into him and knock him (laughs) knock him to the side and just screwing around in that and that game is a lot of fun like i i just Honestly, like when it comes to open world games, like they usually are the games that will get the most attention for me. You know, Breath of the Wild, uh, Far Cry 5 or yeah, Far Cry 5, you know, like this game now. And it it just has something to it that the other the other two uh, Watchdog games just didn't really quite have. Um. And I, and I mean, I liked both of those, but, but yeah, it's the, I'm, I'm just, this is the game that I'm really looking forward to playing on my series X though, is the, is Watch Dogs. So, nice. so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's some other stuff, but I haven't gotten too far into those games to really even talk about them, honestly. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Josh, I know you've been playing a lot. Uh... I mean, obviously Destiny, but you guys can tune into Tower Casuals to hear me gripe at the community about that one. Um, <laughs> I finished Gears Force campaign last week. That was a really cool ending with the uh, the helicopter blades. Really enjoyed that. Uh, played the first couple of missions of Tactics. Not sure if I dig it quite yet. It's it's a cool concept. Not sure if it's for me, uh, but I like seeing franchises expand into other genres. Uh, but the one I want to talk about is Bright Memory. I am, and I want to preface this with, I'm about 15 minutes into this game. Game is a very nice way to put it. Um, it is an hour long. I thought that some of the issues I'd heard about with the Series X port of this game were a little over-exaggerated. I was like, there's no way it's that bad. My friends, it is that bad. Um <laughs> Our friend Luke Lore, the insipid ghost, earlier today described it as a pretty-looking $7 tech demo that also features an insane amount of stuttering and (laughs) screen tearing. I have never heard a more true statement about a video game, I don't think. Um, This is a really big bummer for me. This is a game I've been looking forward to since... uh, Bright Memory Infinite was announced back in May at the Xbox show. 
Mm-hmm. And honestly, playing 15, I, I'll finish the demo out or demo, I'll finish the hour of the gameplay out uh, because I do think the gameplay loop is interesting when it works. Um, I had multiple instances where I've been aiming down sites and it gets stuck. It will not unstick. Uh, okay. That to me in an FPS seems like a very fundamental thing that should not have made it out of QA. Um, if your site, if you are aiming down sites, it's getting stuck you, and you can't get out of it either. You have to wait for the game to decide to let you out of it at that point, which means you cannot use abilities. You cannot dodge. It has already led to me dying three times that way. Uh, it is borderline infuriating. Uh, sometimes your abilities won't activate sometimes, even though, you know, you have the cooldown already done on them. But when the gameplay loop works, it is an awesome experience. I love the combat in it. It is a when the graphics aren't tearing or stuttering, it is a drop dead gorgeous game. It's a very fluid game, but right now I don't know if I can buy Bright Memory Infinite at launch if it's not fixed because this is it's bad. It's bad. Um, and, and I'm I'm done using the excuse. Oh well, you know it, it's launched. You know they could do, they could they could patch it in like a week or two. Uh, no, I'm not using that excuse anymore going forward. This generation, um, I, I, I simply can't do it. If you're if you're going to be a game like this and you're going to promote yourself as a next gen only experience, you need to work at launch. Delay it if you have to. Mm-hmm. There's no reason that a seven dollar title like this could not have been delayed by a month or two to make sure that the technical glitches were worked out. To make sure that something as simple as aiming down sights did not stick. And no, it's not simpler because otherwise it would have been doing it on Destiny for the last week. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, just really disappointing. Uh, beware if you go if you go to get Bright Memory, you will have a visually gorgeous experience when the graphics are working correctly, or if you're playing on a 4K monitor, you will have some awesome mixture of uh, like a hollow sword and a shotgun, an EMP, a pistol, a, a I don't know well, what else you would call it, like an assault rifle. It's some of the best gunplay that I've experienced in a game. Like that's not a Bungie title, so that's or Bungie or Infinity Ward or Respawn. Like outside of the like the top like the three god tier studios when it comes to that, I feel like this is a step below. This was made by one guy, but this is very mm-hmm. much of concept. I really, really, really hope the full experience that he's been working on, uh, Infinite, is way more polished than this, and it should be. A full studio is working on that one. So mm-hmm. that that's what I've been playing. Nice. Uh yeah, that kind of sucks. I, I was I was like really waiting. Yeah. I was waiting for your kind of review on that to I, I was going to play it on stream tomorrow and I don't know if I'm going to now because I have a feeling it's going to end up with me rage quitting. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it freezes up, I'll be again. And uh, keep in mind, I'm literally I said I played about 15 to 20 minutes of this. I'm probably about five minutes deep into the content because it's frozen or uh, the the gun is stuck on me enough times that I've died. Um, it, it's <laughs> yeah, it's it's it has not been a positive experience, but I really lo- I like everything else about it. It is a really cool idea. I think it's a really unique looking game, but holy crap, I don't mind. I might not touch it until they patch it. Mm-hmm. And God knows when that's going to happen. So, right. Uh, for me, I mean, I've been playing a lot of Destiny, uh, just trying to, you know, get that light level up. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I've, I've dabbled in a few other games like Gears 5. I've played at, I played at 120 frames a second on my huge TV in the living room. And I'm like, I had a headache at how fast that thing was moving. Cause I had never played it. Anything that was that smooth at that high of a frame rate like ever mm-hmm. so uh i mean it's gears 5 it works it looks real pretty uh batista in the campaign is real weird so uh <laughs> i switched it back because as much as i like batista i don't i think if they were gonna use him they should just remake the other games with him in it as marcus uh but at this point what are you gonna do <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the gear, the gears, Batista. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously. Uh, 
So I played a little bit of that. I, I kind of just jumped around playing different things. Forza looks incredible. It, it looks like a brand new game. Yeah. It looks and plays, like I said earlier, it looks and plays like it's a brand new title. Yeah. Um, holy God. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh. Load up, load up the Lego expansion, and it's one of, in full 4K 60 frames, is one of the most ridiculous things I think I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, so Forza <laughs> looks amazing. Uh, Gears Tactics, uh, I played the a little bit of the first mission, but we were having some issues with uh, some things around here today. So with, uh, you know, our power going out. So also the Browns were on today, so I didn't really play uh, a whole lot. I wish I would have mm-hmm. skipped watching the Seahawks game to play. Yeah. <laughs> I saw your tweet. I'm afraid to ask. Every single year we start talking about Russell Wilson <laughs> as an MVP candidate. He does something stupid like throwing three picks in a game you can't do that man you just can't do that i don't care if you are on pace to throw the most touchdowns in a season outside of peyton manning like you can't do that you you literally cannot do that and still win the mvp it does not work that way this happens every single time he gets gassed by about half two-thirds of the way through the regular season and it's because he doesn't have help on offense and this year he has no help on defense like no offensive line, no defense. It's the worst. It is the absolute worst. Yeah. I'm mad. Yeah, I, I'm real mad. We have dropped three <laughs> straight games. Three. Or excuse me, not three. We lost one, we won one, and then we lost two. Two of those are divisional games. I'm upset. We now no longer lead the division, and we started out 5-0 and oh this year. 5-0. and oh. I'm upset. I- I know this is controversial here, but like the way you feel right now is how I felt for those last couple of years of, of the Packers. Like when we had, when we had Brett Favre and like, he would just throw it, throw it to the other team. He would just throw it as hard as he could seamlessly or seeming seamlessly just wherever he felt like, and then someone would intercept it. And then he would just laugh at the, at the camera, like, oops, and I, mean, I, I just I could at not, least I could clearly not stand annoyed. Him. Like he's clearly annoyed because when he's yeah. on fire, he's arguably the second best quarterback in the league. Like yeah. he's he's one or yeah. two, depending on how much you love Patrick Mahomes. But this yeah. is getting ridiculous. Come on, yeah. get my man an MVP. It's, yeah. Welcome to trash talk. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I was glad when I'm Roger gonna get very upset. In. Someone get really- Logan in here. This is like I can finally enjoy watching the Packers play again because I just could not stand watching them when when Favre was the the uh, quarterback for those last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Oh. And then he went to Minnesota and look at what he did. Nothing. Browns beat the Texans today, ten to ten to seven. It was a really boring. You beat game. a team with two wins. Congratulations. It was a really boring <laughs> game to watch. I gotta tell you. <laughs> Uh, the Browns have to be like the worst six and three team of all time. <laughs> I gotta tell you, <clears throat> Detroit. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Bad. I'm just saying, like, I don't know how we're six and three. Yeah, I don't. But at this point, I don't know how we're six and three. <laughs> <laughs> Can you, just think about that, Josh. The Seahawks have the same record as the Cleveland the Browns. Have an- we literally have statistically the worst defense of all time right now. We are on pace to give up uh, at least 10 to 15 percent more yards per game than the next worst defense to ever play the game. That is how abysmal our secondary is. We make every single quarterback look like Patrick Mahomes when they play us. Every single defense looks like Patty Mahomes. <sighs> Not even the Bobby Wagner can save us this year. It's a dark, <laughs> dark time in the Pacific Northwest, my friends. But, oh man! So I'm inconsolable. It's bad. It's bad. It's a. It's going to be another early exit this year. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Brexit. Uh, but uh, just to just to wrap a couple things up, I played a little bit of uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater One and Two. It nice. loads like a dream, like. I, you load up the game, and after you hit the tile screens and you load into a level, it's like it, it's almost instant. 
Like it's, yeah. it's literally almost instant. Uh, like, wait, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> you, I know. you start rolling forward. Yeah. And <laughs> it's then like, I, wait, wait. <laughs> then I, I think the most disappointing game I loaded up was Assassin's Creed Odyssey, honestly, uh, because mm-hmm. it's locked at 30 frames. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, once you hit that 60 frames threshold, you can't go back. Yeah, it's tough. I've tried. Like, I, I was like, man, it won't be a big deal. You can't. And even Destiny is like, man, after playing Gears and a, and a little bit of Halo, it's like, man, I cannot wait till December for this update. Because <laughs> yes. uh, 30 frames is, uh, at least Destiny is a smooth 30 frames. Uh, Assassin's yeah. Creed, however. There, there, I have had no frame rate drops, and I'm so happy. Yeah, I, it actually <laughs> feels... Like having a mini PC for this to happen. Yeah, it's... Uh, I was really disappointed in Assassin's Creed Odyssey because like I wanted to I wanted to play a little bit more before I got Valhalla, and mm-hmm. like I don't know if I'm going to be able to because it's it just feels it feels almost worse than it did on the Xbox One, uh, in some ways, and it's just like like it loaded up fast, it loaded up nice, it looks great, but like there's something there's something there's something that just doesn't feel right about it. So. Yeah, I think I think that's the thing though too is like with the way that games were made on last generation versus how they'll be made now, like just some things are just gonna feel weird. Like those those menu screen things, the loading screens in between stuff where it will load up and you can't even read anything it says anymore because it's 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 download you know it's downloading the game so quickly. Yeah, and or loading it, I should say, so quickly that you can't even read anything in between anymore. So it's like, you know, like, why do we even have those? But you can't just say that because that's just something that's baked into the game, and you know. But those things, I think, are going to disappear. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I also loaded yeah. up Rise of the Tomb Raider, and just like the Digital Foundry video, that game is better now. Buttery smooth. Yeah, yeah it's uh. Yeah, so, uh, but we still need to play the last one. So uh, uh, maybe I'll wait and finish it on there. It's really good. Uh, I actually downloaded both of those games because I would like to clean up some achievements I did not finish up. So, uh, anyways, we're gonna wrap it up here. I want to thank everybody for watching and or listening. You can catch Arsenal X, the Xbox podcast, live on Sunday nights on Twitch TV slash Arsenal X podcast or on your podcast service of choice and YouTube on Tuesday mornings. Uh, if you have questions, you can email us at arsenalxpodcast at gmail.com or tweet at us at arsenalxpodcast. Uh, yeah. So, Josh, where can we find you? Uh, every Thursday night on the Tower Casuals right here on this channel or, or posting up on Fridays to your podcast service of choice as well as on Twitter and Twitch at at Josh underscore Finn with two ends as always. We're going to play a lot of destiny this week. We might suffer through some bright memory, depending on how much I hate myself tomorrow morning. <laughs> and if not, we're just going to play a whole lot of Tetris effect and simulate being baked together. Maybe that's what I'll play tonight is Tetris nice. effect. I haven't had a chance to play it yet. It is so good. I, I have not been this in love with a puzzle game since luminous on the Vita. oh man luminous was such a great game i bought a psp and that was the first game i got i didn't know how good it was i just got it because people were like you know you like you like really unique music and you like puzzle games you should get it i am not ashamed to say i bought a vita almost exclusively for another luminous game yeah speaking of luminous that switch port was not great uh, I have the port. Uh, I actually have it on the Switch. I really like it. Oh, it just didn't feel responsive when I played it. As uh, responsive if as you the... want, if you want a true luminous experience, download it onto your phone. Hmm. The free one on phones is fantastic. Oh boy. So, so the the um the Tetris effect is it the same game as the the PlayStation Four one, just with added features or the it's visuals got mul- the multiplayer is exclusive a timed exclusive okay. for now okay so the visuals during the songs when you're playing like the story mode and stuff are all the same as the ps4 one as far as i'm aware okay so 
I don't know. Like, I'll, I'll be honest. I That is another game that I played, and I, I was a little underwhelmed with that game. I mean, like, it's, I love I it's love Tetris. Crazy. It's, an, it's pretty it's an Tetris. What do you want? Tetris game. It's an amazing Tetris game, but I'm talking the, the songs. Huh. Like, the songs that you're that are playing during the music. Or, because that's... There's only one song that you need in Tetris, and that's that's music A yeah, but from that the Game Boy. Not version. in there, okay? But it's not in there, is it? I don't know. It's, I haven't played it yet. I, don't so know. I, don't know. I liked the jazz song and the first song on Tetris Effect, and that was it so far. Ah, uh, Jesse, <laughs> where can we find you? <laughs> you can find me almost everywhere. It's Phantom NXS, including uh, now. Uh, soundclick.com uh, if you search Phantom NXS you will find music there that's better than the music on Tetris Effect wow. <laughs> uh, Joe where can we find you I'm going to ask everyone to check those show notes for my information <laughs> classic classic <laughs> Uh, you can find me at I am Corey and HD on Twitter and Instagram you can find me at Corey and HD on Twitch as I just realized when I was switching some things around that I had the wrong Twitch link in there for like probably a hundred and something episodes of all of our shows. So bum, bum, ba, whoops. Bum, uh, bum. It's fixed now. <laughs> so you can check me out there probably starting this week. I also uh, want to thank everybody so much for watching and are listening. Check out our family of shows, Nintendo power block crossroads, the PlayStation podcast, tower casuals, the destiny podcast, and of course, the Boss Rush Podcast. Also, remember to like, subscribe, share, rate, and review wherever you catch this show. A good review and a good rating might get you <laughs> an entry into something soon. So, I want to thank everybody so much for watching. Until next time, we love you. Goodbye. Bye. I hope you find your dad. Whoa, I got dark. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>